One of the neat things about uh, operating these eco tours is is having guests along that aren't familiar with the area. And one of the one of the cool things, just from a from a birding standpoint, is being along with someone that that is able to add a bird to their life list. So right here in Cameron Parish, we have over 400 species of birds that migrate either to or through the area. You know, at any given point during the year. So the possibility to not only see uh, a multitude of different species but potentially a rare, you know, maybe life bird is, is certainly possible. Gross Savant Eco Tours has access to over 55,000 acres of private property, comprised of various different ecotypes, including fresh and saltwater marsh, coastal prairies, as well as pine plantations. So depending on the time of the year, we've got a lot of different things to, to look at. The spring is a, is a popular time. We have a large neotropical songbird migration, a lot of bunnings and warblers that are traveling back across the Gulf, making landfall here along, along the Gulf Coast. And so that's a, a very popular time of year. Along with that, in April through May, even into June, our private bird rookeries are, are absolutely amazing. Full of roseate spoonbills, great egrets, black crowned night herons, multiple, multiple nesting species of colonial wading birds. So in the fall, we have have a large migration of migratory birds, including waterfowl, ducks and geese that abound the property, as well as a large population of sandhill cranes. With our private access into our remote rookeries, the photography opportunities are endless. Photographers can spend, you know, as long as they want in a secluded area, focusing on nesting birds as well as, you know, birds in flight. So as far as the opportunities go, pretty endless. So Mr. Play, this, this juvenile roseate here, uh, it's really interesting. Whenever they first hatch, they're actually uh, snowy white. And as the parents begin to feed them, um, they start to absorb the iodine in their diet. And, um, and as this bird progresses and, and, and actually fledges, you'll notice a lot of these roseates that are flying here are kind of drab in coloration. Right. Um, these are first year juveniles. It's not until that second year where they become a, what we consider an adult, where they really derive that you know, rich, deep, you know, beautiful pink coloration on the on the wings and, and throughout the tail. Color. So you've got different stage classes right. uh, of, of roseates in here. So so what is this one right here? Is it some sort of egret, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's the great egret. Um, one of the kind of two most numerous birds in this particular rookery. Um, absolutely beautiful. The breeding plumage you'll notice coming off of the coming off the back is almost kind of hair like. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely gorgeous. Again, whenever they're displaying during their courtship, they will actually fan that out behind their head and, and kind of, you know, um, display uh, back and forth between male and female. It is kind of remote, but access is fairly easy. But, you know, along the way, just kind of easing back, you know, to this to this rookery, there are, there are you know, numerous other things to, to photograph and or see and talk about. So, um, yeah, the, the, the viewing opportunities out here are endless. It's neat uh, knowing that, that, that a place like this actually exists. You know, I mean, you, you, you maybe see these things on TV, but to actually get out here and physically uh, view it, um, it makes all the difference in the world. It's hard to put into words the, the sheer beauty um, of this particular location. Mr. Clay, if you look right here, um, kind of amongst all these great egrets, you're going to see a tricolor. Okay. And, um, and you'll look for that little bit of white coloration under the of the dark wings there. Yep, you got him. Cool. <laughs>